So I would like to explain this topic with a simple graph again, whereby on the horizontal axis we have the time and on the vertical axis we have the voltage over the battery. And just as a refresher or reminder, remember that comparison that I drew between a water hose and electricity, right? So the pressure inside of the hose, the water pressure, you could compare it to the pressure of electricity, which is explained, which is indicated with the voltage or the volts of electricity and the amount of water running through the hose. So the flow of water you can compare it to the amperage or the current running through an electrical circuit. Now I'm going to use three different colors to explain this graph, to explain the charging cycle of a battery. Now the first one is the red one, which represents the constant current charging phase of a battery. So during this phase, you are feeding a constant amount of current into the battery. And as a result of you feeding a constant current into the battery, over time, the voltage of your battery will slowly increase. Most of the times, if you're feeding a constant amount of current, the voltage increases quite linear. Now, this first step in the charging cycle is often referred to as bulk. And I mean, the bulk stage, it's just a word that people have agreed on that you uh, give this, this stage in the overall charging cycle. But just remember that during the bulk, charging stage you are feeding a constant amount of current into the battery and as a result the voltage of the battery increases now after a while as the voltage reach a certain set point which you or the manufacturer has um, configured into your charge controller you are now starting to change your behavior now starting to uh, take a different approach on charging the battery so we are now entering the yellow section, which is referred to as the constant voltage phase of the charging cycle. So in this part of the charging cycle, you are adjusting the current in such a way that you maintain a constant voltage on the battery terminals. Now just remember that in this stage, in the absorption stage, even though the, the voltage is kept steady, so the voltage remains at the same level, you are still pushing energy into the battery, right? Because you're feeding it with current. And also as you're going, as time progresses during the absorption stage, uh, you will see that you have to add less and less current into the battery. So less and less energy in order to maintain this voltage level. Now at a certain point, the charger will decide that the amount of current that is now necessary in order to maintain this voltage of the absorption level has reduced to such a small amount that the charger now assumes that the battery is as full as it can possibly be. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of off-grid energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go ahead again. And it will now allow the voltage to drop to a lower level where we are still in the yellow section, so the constant voltage section, but it's just at a lower level and we refer to this section as the float voltage. Now, once you have reached the float stage of the charging cycle, you may assume that the battery is 100% charged, that it is as full as it can possibly be. And the purpose of the float stage is to make sure that you no longer uh, continue to charge the battery so it avoids that you're overcharging the battery and therefore damaging the battery but it also avoids that the battery slowly discharges because you're actually still pushing energy into the battery a small amount but you're still pushing energy into the battery and this is to compensate for the self-discharge of the battery because each and every battery has a certain self-discharge rate so if you wouldn't do anything if you wouldn't be charging or discharging the battery by your action the battery would still lose energy over time so therefore in the float stage you're still adding a little bit of energy to keep the battery at a hundred percent state of charge now depending on which kind of battery you have you might occasionally decide to continue to a special stage referred to as the equalization stage so this stage consists of two different steps the first step is the red section again, whereby you feed the battery with a constant amount of current and you're trying to get to a certain elevated voltage, a voltage substantially higher than the float and absorption voltage. Then once you have reached this elevated voltage, so the equalization voltage, so again the charger will change its behavior the same as when it changes from bulk towards absorption. So it changes from the red towards the yellow line, it will now maintain the equalization voltage for a set amount of time. 
Now the combination of the first three steps, so the bulk, absorption and float, is considered as a complete charging cycle. But you can imagine that you're sometimes not able to run all the way through these three steps. So what might happen, for example, is that, um, you know, maybe you finish the whole bulk stage and you're in absorption stage, but you actually don't reach the end of absorption. That somewhere halfway in the absorption stage, you would start to consume electricity from the battery. So you're actually starting to discharge the battery and the voltage would slowly drop. Now, don't stress because this is not a big problem. It happens quite often because you'll just discharge the battery and at one point when you have power available again and you've stopped discharging it, you just jump back into the bulk stage and you'll just continue from the start again. So you start to uh, push uh, current into the battery at a constant current uh, way until you have reached the absorption voltage again and the process start all over again. But just remember that for many batteries it's quite important that at least on a regular interval you actually complete the whole cycle. So you run completely through the bulk and absorption stage until you have reached the float stage. So for certain batteries it's quite important that you do this on a regular interval. So well done, you understand quite a bit about batteries now. So you've completed the section on battery basics. You understand the difference between the cells, the batteries, and even the details about the charging cycle, what happens during the charging cycle of a battery. So now we're ready to move ahead to the next section in the chapter of batteries, which is regarding all the different types of lead-acid batteries.